we should have starter in theory just uh, waiting for the usual chat confirmation that we are live okay so I think we're live hello everybody and uh, welcome back uh, we we are back with these uh, uh, streams um, sadly I have to apologize straight away I don't know what's going on with my uh, webcam um, it was working fine up to uh, some minutes ago and then now if I turn it on it's gone so no idea what's going on here um, so yeah you will have to um, go through this stream without uh, looking at my handsome face and uh, I really apologize for that anyway so we're back after many many months of uh, uh, having to be forced to stop to do this kind of uh, of streams and uh, uh, I never really talk completely clearly what happened um, last year in about um, it was about September and um, people that follow me on Twitter they 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 knew that there were some big changes in in uh, in my life and um, the 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 big thing that happened was that um, on September last uh, last year September 21st these uh, three foreigners and one Filipina were uh, kidnapped in Samal Island which is an island uh, right in front of uh, Davao city which uh, was the place where I was living and uh, um, sadly one of these three, guy, three guys uh, has been executed um, a couple of uh, weeks ago I think um, when when this thing happened last year you can imagine that it was uh, quite a shock for for me and my wife uh, uh, living there as a foreigner especially in a place like Samal which is a place where we usually uh, go uh, there's, there's beautiful beaches there and fantastic resorts and the fact of something like this happening so close to where you live it's really something that um, proved quite shocking uh, for us and so my my first reaction uh, was uh, to try to keep it as low as possible and the, the first thing that I did was actually stopping my stream I didn't want to attract any sort of attention to the fact that there was a, a foreigner living there um, in, uh, in Davao with you know some sort of uh, even if very very small following on the internet I just wanted to make it you know try to be under the radar <laughs> as much as possible and then uh, what happened was that uh, a couple of weeks after in a place uh, near Davao in the same region of the Philippines called Dipolog there was actually an Italian guy uh, there, there was a uh, uh, kidnapped as well um, s luckily the, the, this guy made it out of this story um, fine so he was able to um, be freed by the, the Philippine army and but that happened basically uh, a couple of weeks after that was the, the 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 other foreigners was on the t 21st of September this one was on the October 10th as soon I saw the news uh, I basically told my wife well that's it you know this is the, this is it it's time to move out and um, so we started uh, again um, changing changing uh, uh, life changing continent and uh, I don't know how many of you have experience uh, of this kind of things but it's, it can be incredibly stressing um, especially because uh, when you are moving so far away everything becomes a problem even um, bringing your your stuff with you becomes a huge huge problem and a very expensive problem so you sort of start to 
have to to think if uh, the, the the stuff you own are really worth all the money that you need to actually bring it around and all the hustle especially in a situation like we had where we were living but we really didn't know where we were going um all we knew was that we were coming back to to europe uh, but still no clear idea of where we were going so in, in like in one week we had to sell pretty much everything that we had and then <coughs> Finally, we were ready to leave, and then another major uh, problem happened, where there were there was some problem uh, at the airport, because uh, when, when we were leaving f with my my wife documents, and it turned out uh, it was a, um, a very weird um, rule, a law in in the European law, and um, you know when when you write laws using the the words like might or maybe um uh everybody can have their own personal uh interpretation of that so basically we were uh not allowed to to live manila um so we had to spend more um i think about 10 days more there um trying to sort out uh this misunderstanding between you know the various embassy and and the the uh, KLM, which was the um, the airline that we were using to come back. Uh, again, if the guys are uh, following me on Twitter, they might remember some exchanges between me and KLM on Twitter. So yeah, again, very stressing. We were uh, really stranded there in Manila. Uh, finally, we made it to Italy. And we spent a couple of months there, uh, and then Christmas arrived, and it was uh, one of the probably the first Christmas in Cuno Simulazione as a company that we managed to 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 actually uh, be able to 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 take it as as an holiday, and so. Um, when when the the time arrived, I was in Italy staying in a residence, and you know it wasn't really ideal. And, and, and you know, with my wife, we said, um, "Let's go to Holland to spend Christmas there, and if we like it, we we will stay there." And um, so we came here, and basically we never left. So uh, right now I'm I'm in Holland, and I'm really grateful, really happy to be here, and enjoying fast internet and enjoy. Uh, things that work <laughs> coming coming from the Philippines it's uh, it's quite uh, an impact uh, to, f to to be in a country where things just work and uh, you know it's, it's difficult to describe but, you know it, it's uh, it's exactly the kind of feeling that you get it's funny how um, pretty much every Dutch person that I met um, asked me you know uh, you're Italian, you know why? Why you come to live in 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 this country? Well, and probably they really don't understand what uh, what a beautiful country they have. And uh, so yeah, I'm really glad to be here. There are things, of course, that I miss about the Philippines: uh, the laid-back lifestyle and the the constant weather. Although it's much better for work here in Holland because I can work in the same time zones as uh, all the other guys in the company. Um, again, internet is much better. That allows me to uh, spend some time online driving with you guys. Um, again, you probably you have seen some streams uh, from Luca uh, with uh, you know the, us driving um, in multiplayer, make, making a fool of ourselves. Um, so. Uh, and also the temperature really helps. The temperature really helps. Uh, it's much better to work when you have, uh, uh, you know, 15 degrees outside and 20 degrees inside compared to the Philippines where you have like 36 <laughs> degrees outside and inside you have the air conditioning uh, working like crazy. Try to keep the temperature um, below um, 30 and you have this constant pressure on your brain um, and this constant feeling like all you want to do is sleep uh, so yeah so that's that's uh, that's enough for uh, personal life uh, coming to the stream I try to um, I, I try to make these streams a little bit shorter this time 
I won't really go into coding. I'm, I'm, I'm more. Uh, I will more focused on showing uh, what uh, what I'm doing personally um, with with Assetto Corsa, and um, so showing new feature and then going to QA. So I, it won't be something like you know one hour forty five minutes like uh, we had before. Um, and something else that I wanted to say is that. Um, I won't be able really to answer any question uh, regarding the console version of Assetto Corsa. The reason is that um, is is that uh, pretty much the entire development process is under NDA um, with Sony with Microsoft. So I'm not supposed completely to even tell you what what we're using to uh, to develop. Um, Assetto Corsa on the console, so um, that that was also one of the reasons why I didn't start these uh, streams earlier, apart from being lazy, but um, it's also the, the fact that even now most of my week is taken by um, working on the console, and that means that um, the, the stuff that I'm working on, I'm not really able to show it, so that, that really stopped me from um, from doing uh, this kind of things so um, so so please you know don't don't be angry if I will just ignore any any questions about the console development also uh, you have to understand when it comes to Assetto Corsa console this is our first experience where this is not a completely independent project but you know we have a we have a publisher slash producer that is helping us in uh, uh, developing and marketing this Although we're still responsible 100% for the development of the code and all the content, um, but you know all the marketing um, is handled by uh, 505, and that means that you know I just want to let them uh, do their job uh, because you know they they can do a much better job than a programmer uh, trying to. Uh, say stuff on, on, on the internet on a stream that I'm not supposed to say. So, okay, let's move on to see what is going on with the Seto Corsa. What I'm doing, again, uh, <coughs> I don't have a, a, a huge amount of time to, develop, to um, use on this. So, most of this thing I actually done um, during, you know, what is supposed to be my, my free time during the, the, the weekend. Um, so they're not massive uh, things, but you know, um, they're still um, small improvements that are interesting to see. So this is the currently the 1.7 version of Assetto Corsa. Okay, so the first thing is um, I got the new uh, functionality added on the uh, Performance Delta app, and I will show you what it does. Um, what it is is basically an instantaneous uh, feedback on whether you are uh, faster or slower in that particular instant. So uh, it will be much, much more clear uh, as soon I will start my second and third lap here, so I, I just put a uh, uh, Balelunga uh, clap so we can go through it very, very quickly. So, the Delta app uh, for me is one of those things that I cannot uh, live without. Um, even if I, if I if I find myself driving a real car on track like it happened in Balilunga, if you guys are following us, um, you saw that we had an event where we were lucky enough to drive cars. Uh, okay, so let, let's see. So the, what is happening here is that it's saying that I'm in this moment, you can see if I am faster or slower in that particular part of the track. And so it's not, it's not the, although I'm globally faster, uh, 19 seconds faster, it's just showing me in every instant if I am faster or slower than my reference lap. And I find that this is quite useful 
especially well first of all it tells you a lot about the your breaking point you can immediately see if you 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 break um, later than the refer la reference lab because you see see in this case I break later and now I'm slower um, but the the thing that really helps me is in yeah in in while you are inside the corner um, and it's it's really an immediate feedback if you are bringing uh, more or less speed inside that corner so if if the corner is a long one is a very interesting information to look at um, to know what's what's going on so that's one uh, small addition to the to the thing um, something else if you have a look at the real time app down here I don't know if the mouse is coming in the stream I've added um, this I'm not 100% sure uh, if it will make it into the um, final version um, but definitely I the, the temperature information um, will be there and one of the reason is that uh, right now, now temperature during a session are not constant anymore. Uh, in a set of course, are until now we had a situation where if you start a race with a certain temperature, that will be your temperature for the entire race. While what what will happen in 1.7 is that um, those uh, temperature um, will actually change uh, during the session, so you will not have. Uh, uh, always the same situation. I also plan to add uh, wind, which is going to be something pretty, pretty much impossible to 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 feel, probably. But it's it's uh, still nice to know that it will be there. And right now, I also have the the the, the grip information. That's the one that I'm not totally convinced to leave there, um, because. Uh, in my experience, what we are, uh, what what I'm saying is that it's it's quite obvious that the track um, gets faster. Um, whether or not we want to give uh, a number to that, I don't know. It's true that we have a number in the uh, in this one, so we know what is the temperature in this situation. So. Um, does it make sense that we can only see it when we go at the pit um, instead of having it all the time? I don't know. Um, but yeah, so those are uh, two things that uh, I'm working on, and these are pretty much done. Um, now moving uh, moving on is uh, the the big one, and for the big one we change. Um, uh, track and car okay um, again if you follow the forum of our set of course you would know that we had uh, we had uh, a, a poll um, that was requ requesting you know feedback about um, what kind of feature uh, you guys would like to to see um, coming in Assetto Corsa next and uh, as you know the, um, the virtual rea reality um, was overwhelming a <laughs> um, uh, victor in that in that uh, in that poll and um, um, the second the second place went to uh, what I was expecting to be the first one uh, which is uh, break temperatures and um, so right now uh, the situation is uh, let me see where is telemetry so I got the basic code done for that so um, I hope you can see from the stream um, these are the real-time temperatures so right now we we have uh, the, the disk at 25 degrees And as I break, it, go, it immediately goes up. And let's let's go to a, a and and then they are cooling down. I also have 
some basic uh, so right now they are cold so hence going long in that uh, first break um, right now you know a as usual I work on the um, algorithms for this so all the, the, the formulas and then it will be uh, Ari's job to, to pretty much put the, the right numbers in here um, and match the, the data that we have um, probably uh, you also heard uh, or, or read me uh, saying that uh, yeah f as far as the the, the code involved um, it's not really complicated um, so I was able to actually put this in just working on the on the weekend um, the huge work here is really to um, work and optimize uh, all the cars um, in order to, to to have this system working um, and that's a colossal job uh, again you know uh, it, it, it's very easy you, you can imagine how many laps you will have to, to, to make in order to prove that uh, the system is actually doing uh, what it's supposed to do. I remember with, uh, with Netcar I had um, a couple of difficult situations where um, I had the car that was not braking. Um, like, you know, it was starting to brake and then uh, it, couldn't, it couldn't do the last part of the braking. Uh, so it didn't stop, it never stopped. And I remember going, going really crazy trying to figure out what it was and I was c totally convinced that it was something to do with uh, uh, low speed, uh, low speed uh, physics that didn't want to make the car stop and eventually I discovered that because the, the car that I was th driving was um, much heavier than the other cars that I used to drive um, in that car. Uh, the, the real reason was that the, the, the brakes were getting too hot and the car was not braking anymore. So it's a, it's a colossal job to, to actually uh, try to do one under car. Uh, probably you will spend probably one... Uh, if, if, if the only way to, to, to do it was to do it like this, like driving and testing, you would probably end up spending one day for each car. And when you have uh, if, when you have something like uh, 100 cars, like we have, you can imagine that uh, it becomes pretty much impossible. If I is where to work on this, uh, only on this, uh, it will take him probably four months to go through all the cars uh, in this way. So this is definitely not acceptable. So I had to try to find uh, a smarter way to approach the, the problem and uh, um, this is what I came with right now so uh, what this is this is a, a quick um, editor and predictor of what uh, the temperature of the tires will be so let's say for example we take Monza and um, this is uh, these are um, files that are saved by the cars in a you have to put them in a particular mode and just saving information f in order for this um, prediction um, to work so the cool thing about this w w we can see here the temperature we can see that the temperature w we reach the maximum temperature at this breaking part of course this is the first um, the first breaking part and we, we reach around uh, 588 uh, degrees so probably not hot enough for this car to be optimal the cool thing is that I can um, simulate more laps so I can go more laps and we can see that you know after 15 laps uh, the temperature is going to be something like you know 596 uh, so it went up the, the temperature and it's also possible to change the the parameter that regulates the the the, the, the the braking temperature and have the this immediately react to it um, so this 
could probably uh, make Ari's job much easier uh, and much quicker um, instead of uh, actually going in and out of the software all the time to change these things. Um, uh, whether or not, again, um, this is going to be part of uh, 1.7, I don't know. Um, I don't know if it will be there, I don't know if uh, um, if it will be there, how many cars will have it, and so on. It's the, the, the driving aspect is very interesting because um, um, it, right, right now in Assetto Corsa you really don't want to, th th there is one driving technique that doesn't work uh, as it should, and is the fact that um, when you have a car with uh, with downforce, uh, you really want to uh, kick um, the, the the braking pedal um, as hard as possible at the beginning of the braking um, in real life. Um, in Assetto Corsa, it looks to me like the 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 better technique right now is still to fade. To to f uh, to feed the brake um, a little bit more uh, smooth uh, than you know not like bang as hard as possible and one of the reason is be because right now the braking the brakes are reacting instantly uh, as soon you 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 press the pedal once you have the the the, the braking temperature uh, even if you brake at the maximum the 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 the, the brakes will need some time to warm up and get to the temperature where they are actually giving you the maximum uh, braking performance. So that will change a little bit the, 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 the way cars, um, especially those kind of cars uh, with lots of downforce will need to be driven. So exciting, I'm really exciting to, to, to see how this works out. Iris didn't see this yet, so he will see once he's back. Um, from from the Nürburgring with uh, with Marco, so that's pretty much it. Uh, what is going on at the moment? Um, I plan to do more work on things like um, timing. I'm really not happy uh, about how things are working regarding um, lap times and. Uh, you know, sectors times in a set of course that, that are sort of there in the code, but um, you cannot see them and so on. So we are planning eventually to have a, a, a redesign of the entire timing system in, in the software. And um, I will see, uh, I, I would like to have a situation where when you are maybe in the qualifying and waiting for other people to finish, uh, you have some more information about what's going on um, in the in the in the performance. And one thing could be to have the sector times. One other possibility could be to have the cars uh, communicating their uh, performance delta. Um, so you will be able to see in the leaderboards um, who is going for a for a fast lap um, with a performance delta so that that could be something that just makes a little bit more interesting the time that you're waiting in the in the pits so yeah so we are already uh, half an hour into the stream so let's let's move on to some question quick question of course um, as usual I will uh, pick up the first question that I see and try to answer or oh, uh, you know uh, so you can go with the with the question where is the face cam yeah as I said at the beginning see that you know still doesn't work I have mean, no idea what's wrong with this camera no idea anyway Any plans for visual tireware like graining, flat spotting, etc.? Uh, not no concrete plans, but I really, I, I would like to do it. I would really like to do it. Um, the problem is that we don't have a, we don't have a, a unified 
system for tires graphics so uh, that probably we do have a, a dedicated shader so it could be possible to do it uh, of course it will need mean um, rework all the cars or implement it only on some cars probably it makes sense to implement it on open wheels um, because the other one you you won't really be able to to read it at all <coughs> number two in the boat are full start engine start not break tap <laughs> is it I don't oh my god I don't know if that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but anyway, um, full start and just start. Yes, I'm doing work on that as well. So, um, it, uh, as I was saying in the poll, the the all things that eventually will uh, uh, will make into the game, especially this one, full start, um, engine stall. Um, and uh, something else definitely we want to change is the way uh, races are ending. Um, in the multiplayer, so um, I'm already talking with Manuel and the other guys to try to have a, um, not not to have the car teleported to the pits once you are finished your race. Um, the problem there is that we want to give a very clear signal that you're done, um, and you know going to the pits was a clear signal that you were done, uh, but probably just a letterboard coming coming up and. You know, and, and probably you have something you can click to 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 to, to let it go, so you can keep driving or, or, or whatever. Um, I love the war support and how it got better uh, so quickly after the the rift came out. Well, yeah. Um, again, you know, the, the the rift story was that I wasn't in the loop at all. Uh, I wrote the very very first implementation of the Rift and then uh, I passed that to another developer in Kuno Simulazioni that left and um, so I sort of had this this um, very uh, uncomfort uncomfortable situation where I had no idea of how much work was I involved into uh, fixing it be because um, I really didn't know the code at all, so I had to go in there and study the code, and 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 then try to understand um, why it didn't work anymore and how much uh, changes were required to make it work. And um, it was it was uh, after all it was a very nice experience, you know the the actually the actually the the new SDK that Oculus has is so much better than the one that I implemented um, a long time ago for the very first version of the Oculus Lift so and then I had one one of those things that really it, it's really funny is um, how you you sometimes you get ideas on how to do things um, that that you it just allowed you to solve problems very quickly and you go like why didn't I think about this earlier and you know that was the idea of how actually to implement the the menu system uh, because I was trying to to create a new menu system but uh, it was just an item and I was like you know this is never going really to work because there are so many functions to stick in here and it will always lag behind and then I will have to maintain two things it was going to be a, a nightmare and um, so one morning I just had this idea of how to manage to bring the the rendering that we had for the menu into a 3D world and then literally I was able to to put it in enough half a day and um, you know the result is is uh, very satisfactory for me at the moment so will you implement the option to set the max torque of the steering wheel oh, it's gone oh, where is it no, the the max torque of steering wheels. Uh, sorry, Rene, I, I really don't don't understand don't understand the the question. How about low speed physics? I remember in an old stream that you look at the physics in in place automatically once in a very low speed. 
the Kennedy one. I remember in an old stream that you lock the physics in place automatically. Uh, <coughs> well, the, the the problem with that is that um, uh, there are situations where, for example, the 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 the, the stars um, or even the pits sometimes are not uh, totally flat. <laughs> and then the car could start moving um, so it's one of those things that um, don't don't really don't really uh, the, the, the amount of work and testing you have to do is not really justified in a racing simulation where you are not supposed to 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 stay still um, uh, still, there is some work that I'm doing on the tire model. I don't want to say anything about it because we still don't know where we're going with that. And um, so it could be interesting, you know, there could be some interesting development there. How is that short menu coming along? Well, it's not coming <laughs> along at the moment, so, um, or at least it's not coming along in the way that I originally envisioned um, where you know you had uh, like you know every possible function accessible from it so probably it's going to be something um, smaller and probably only dedicated to things like pit stops or things that you really need to do uh, while you're driving I already asked a long time ago, when is possible to add server option about the retire option in race session? Uh, um, yeah, yeah, we, we're also thinking about that be because we don't like the, the situation as it is now. I, I still don't think that, that um, stopping people from being able to teleport to the pits is, uh, is a good idea. Um, I think we should uh, we should try to analyze better uh, why this is a problem and why this can be turned into a cheat and try to um, fix that. Uh, let's Did anybody solve? As far as I remember, I think some names were still missing. Um, stereo mirrors in VR mode, I don't understand what you mean for stereo mirrors. Maybe you want to clarify that. Um, I see the red one ring, yeah. Can you drive a lap around there? No, not yet, because it's not, it's not absolutely in a situation where we would like to show it. So I, ne I, need, I need the green light from Marco before I can show it. So right now it's got the track and uh, only the track and some trees around so uh, not yet not yet force AI pit stop is possible yeah yes it's um, also something that I would like to to do not not only for the AI I think for everybody like you know to try to put a, uh, a rule where you need to, to to do a pit stop even if uh, even if you you want to um, I I even if you would be able to do a, a race with um, uh, without without stopping, uh, Michael is asking transmission flex and wobble at some point. I don't know. I don't know. It's something that we spent lots of time talking about at the very beginning of Seto Corsa. Uh, um, I think I think there are two different things that people probably put together into this and one is the irregularity of the engine at low rpm that give you that give you that very uh, almost undrivable feel when you are trying to to drive some race car at very low speed if you had a uh, there are some motorbikes that do that as well i remember i had a yamaha r6 that 
was really difficult to drive at uh, 10, 20 kilometers per hour. I just didn't want to go at that speed, just refused to do it. And uh, um, it could be more to do to, to engineer regularities there than to flex. But uh, um, it is, is, is something that fascinates me. I think I already talked about this in some old streams. Uh, although right now, I think uh, I, I want to concentrate a little bit more on the racing side instead of going totally crazy about this physics stuff. Uh, rolling start for the next version? No, I don't. I don't think so. I don't, I don't think rolling start will be part of Passetto Corsa um, 1.0. I, I just don't see that happening. It's just um, also because we, I will have to understand how they work. Um, Uh, Stefano, happy to see you streaming again. Always enjoy it. Has HC Pro ever opened door for Kunos to bring close? Oh, yes, very often, very often, very often. I would say that you know. Well, uh, the, the 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 fact that we were able to s um, sell um, Assetto Corsa to customers uh, even before Assetto Corsa went into early access, even before their Assetto Corsa went into tech preview. Um, actually is what made Assetto Corsa possible because you know um, those projects uh, actually uh, financed the, the, the years of development that went into Assetto Corsa so it, they, they actually made possible to have Assetto Corsa uh, as software and then uh, many important licenses that you see and you will see in Assetto Corsa in the future uh, were open, you know, the doors were open by the fact that, you know, that those, those companies might need something um, from us. So, yeah. Definitely, yes. Uh, could the soft lock option be improved not to be as violent as now? Uh, yeah, I agree. I agree. It's, it really sucks right now. Um, uh, how to make it less violent, no idea, no idea. Does Dodge portion Hond use AC Pro? Um, honestly, I don't know because not being part of the I totally out of the loop when it comes to who is using um, our stuff. So I have I have absolutely no idea because there is absolutely no contact between me and these uh, customers. Um, it's it's usually Marco that is handling the entire thing. So I I have no idea. Um, is there any plan to implement far Marshall Flux movement? And LCD flags, LCD flags should be pretty easy to implement. But uh, uh, flags movement probably a little bit trickier, depend how 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 nice you want it. Of course, the problem with that is that um, yeah, uh, it's not something LCD screen. I've thought about it. Marshalls, not really uh, at the moment. Is Steam Workshop still a possibility in the future? Uh, I don't know. In theory, you know, we have the entire thing working already. Um, it's one of those things that, you know, some people, you know, I, th I think it's a, a, a very good answer to this. It's like some people notice on the forum, and they were very, very right, that um, our website is not, uh, updated to the new content and that really I think shows uh, the amount of um, uh, the, the, uh, the crazy amount of details that each one of us is uh, submerged with so um, the, the workshop would be something else that you know 
um, will need somebody to 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 actually go there and checking and test it and and blah 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 and then of course you release it and there will be um, reports so um, right now I I fear that is something that is just above the the level of what we can handle at the moment so that's why it's been has been um, yeah on the back burner for probably more than one year now that we ha we have the code basically ready to go vibe support next patch um i don't know i haven't start i i still haven't opened my box <laughs> with the vibe actually marco uh marco knows how lazy i am and he was already laughing because he was telling me that the thing is um it's got lots of pieces compared to the to the Oculus Rift, and uh, it requires you to put these pieces around. So, um, 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 the the idea the idea would be to to have an update totally dedicated to the virtual reality uh, support, and that means full Vive support and completely full working. Um, Oculus Rift. Um, I still don't know. We we haven't decided yet when the um, the new update is going to be. We don't know uh, when the new update is going to be. So what is going to be in the next update really depends on when this is. But the Vive support is very high in the list at the moment. Uh, yum yum. Samuel, do you have set computer science students as fans? <laughs> I'm amazed by your work and imagine how small the time the team is. Actually, yeah, actually, I'm I'm trying to to expand the team a little bit because, as I was saying, is uh, right now we are just at, uh, 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 in a situation where we, we we hardly can handle it, the amount of work, and b because the, there is there are so many things that we want to do. Um, you know, sometimes we we start to do something because there is so much passion that you know, okay, let's do this thing, and then and then you realize, oh my God, this is a uh, you know, s so much work um, to maintain. So I'm actually thinking to expand the team a little bit, and it's not as easy as 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 it seems, you know, just, uh, because. Um, uh, Probably Sim Racer will be very surprised, but you know most game programmers don't like racing games. They actually hate uh, racing games. Uh, I I tend to hang out with with the uh, with the community of of developers and of in independent game developers, and most of them consider racing games uh, completely uninspiring. And you and you. You can understand why, you know, racing games don't really have a, uh, a big part of game design. You're just trying to copy reality, and uh, so many game developers don't really like that. Uh, Japanese DLC car park. Is there any plans for just track park? Um, you know, track tracks take so long to develop that. I think in order to have a track pack, probably we will have to 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 spend like one year without releasing tracks. You know, usually a track takes takes Simone at the moment probably four months to to develop. So if if you think about Simone working for one year to make a track pack of four tracks, um, I think it's much better to have four DLC with one track and uh, cars uh, instead of one with only tracks. Um, when will it be possible to re rewind the replay during a live streaming? I don't understand that. If you're talking about replays in multiplayer, that's something else that, you know, we had a, a small uh, meeting about what to do with the next version, and that was another thing that you know with a silent we really want to look at because the situation at the moment is just unacceptable that you are forced to run out from from uh, from a race before you know the server loops if you want to save the replay is totally unacceptable 
is it possible to implement adjustable font size for apps and UI? I think it's it's already it's something that we release in 1.6. You you can now uh, scale. Uh, yeah. I saw like uh, you know, any support to SRS, not direct support. I think they're doing a fantastic job, and I, I really like to see. I really like to see the fact that the the, the launcher interface is HTML put to such a good use finally <laughs> because uh, I think I said this already um, I was I was a little bit I, I was really expecting to see more um, total conversion of a set Corsa where also the launcher will be to completely redesigned it didn't happen so it's nice to see this uh, this uh, this new implementation uh, there Set of mirrors in VR, let's see what it is. Right now, when using a VR, the mirrors look like... Ah, okay. So, ah, okay, so you want to see a mirror that is like a real mirror. No, I, no, that's not... Some, it's, it's something that is absolutely not built in our uh, engine. <laughs> and also, if you have something like that, then you can imagine you will have to start to implement something like, you know, adjust the angle of the mirror. Uh, so, I definitely no plans about that. Any plans to implement weather transition now that we have? Uh, we, yeah, I would love that. I would love to, to have weather transitions. Uh, the, the, the problem is that I, I don't really know if it is possible to have a smooth transition from a situation where there is sun to a situation where there is no sun. Um, tricky, very tricky. I mean to see incidents w while live streaming is going on, you mean to have a replay while you you are going in while you are in multiplayer, probably. How is this D-pad support going on? Is is part of that menu that I was saying that at the moment is a l little bit stopped. Uh, Any chance we get the complete launcher into VR? I would say zero, zero possibility. I think, I think the way to treat this is you have to think uh, that the 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 visor is your is your helmet. So when you're ready to ready to race, you you put your helmet and you go. Stefano, do you have any plans to use Vulkan on other low-level API? Uh, not for Assetto Corsa. Not for this version of Seto Corsa. I'll definitely look. I will definitely look into it for whatever it, whatever we will do with our uh, next next game. But definitely not something that I will look into for for Assetto Corsa. It's a very big job that is not going to bring any advantage at all because um, usually APIs. Is, um, it's not just a matter of changing the API and then you get. A performance advantage. You need to design your 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 entire graphic engine to make a, to take advantage of that API. So um, let's let's take an example between uh, DirectX 9 and DirectX 11. Um, they they do work in a completely different way. So uh, if your engine is not designed with DirectX Text 11 in mind, it means that the entire game is talking to the graphic engine in a in a DirectX 9 way, and that could actually translate into a loss of performance instead of uh, an improvement of performance. And I think I read something about I don't know if this Counter Strike, which is um, right now having better performance in OpenGL than in Vulkan, and that's exactly what I'm talking about you, you know it's not enough to implement the API to get the win you need to rewrite your engine in order to take advantage of how that API wants to work any plans to implement custom line liveries no n absolutely not absolutely not that may, might be there might be a situation where um, in the future, you I would like this, a situation where you could actually uh, choose what skin you want to to have, um, but um, custom in the sense of if I don't have the skin, I go and download it somewhere automatically. 
I don't think I want to get there in, in that kind of thing. Is the engine the main reason why you can't do so many things where the range is here you want to? Um, it's, uh, how to put this? Um, I think at, at the end you 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 the engine is is a is a, is a funny word because uh, especially when you have uh, something like a Seto Corsa, uh, for me an engine is something that is powering different games. So um, you know, Cry Engine is an engine, or a real engine is an engine because there are many games that are using it to to make their own things. Um, in the case of Assetto Corsa, I don't even think you can call it an engine because it's only used in Assetto Corsa, so it's following the requirements of Assetto Corsa, uh, the, the requirements that we decided to have for Assetto Corsa at the beginning. And of course, once you sit down and you take some decisions of what you want to have in the game and what you don't want to have in the game, you start and you design your your software in the, in that way. So you get in a situation where you 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 take decisions and for example for uh, when it comes to night um rendering um we many years ago when we when started to to work on Assetto Corsa uh, we started with the deferred engine which is an engine that allowed to have uh, more light sources and the at, at that time, we were still on DirectX 10, and there was lots of problems with anti-alias and things li like that. And uh, performance was not really great. And um, s so we just sat down and we said, "Okay, okay, th does this make any sense? Um, considering that you know 99% of the races will be in in." during the day, does it make sense to, to pay such a huge price to have a, a much more complicated um, graphic, graphic engine uh, to support multiple light when 99% of the time it will not be used. So at the time the, the decision was to, no, it didn't make sense. And uh, so it's not really a limitation. I think the reason why Assetto Corsa gives you uh, much better performance than competitor games at the moment uh, is because of that. So uh, we might have rain, but we might have you know 30 frames per second less. So I think considering what was the scope of Assetto Corsa, I, I still think is the it was the right decision. Okay, let's. Uh, it's almost one hour, so let's go for the last two questions. Uh, is it possible to improve camera tools for medium makers? Um, everything is possible, <laughs> um, as long as it makes sense at the moment. It's definitely not on my particular radar. Uh, did I follow the 24 Nuber Nurburgring? No, but Simone did because he's a, a huge fan. So he kept us sort of updated. I didn't even watch the the Monaco Grand Prix. I slept. <laughs> um, okay, last question. Then we go. When did the flamethrower on the there? I don't understand the question. Is brake pressure related to the way brakes will work from temperature? Uh, I don't understand the question. We will get the light flash button. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, I think, um, I think there is no reason why, you know, why it shouldn't be there. The other thing that I would like um, would be um, to have the 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 car position um, on an LED screen on the car a little bit like they do in GT3 races. So I think that could be interesting. Okay, guys, so um, let's close this one at almost exactly one hour. Um, as usual, thank you very much for joining. And uh, I hope next time the, the camera will work. And uh, so uh, 
it will be a little bit more interactive somehow so um, again thank you very much and I'll see you next week probably or the week after that we will see um, as soon as I have something interesting to show you um, I will do another episode thank you again and bye bye ciao